The future of luxury brick and mortar is at a crossroads. Our objective today is to leave you with a few actionable ideas around the future of brick and mortar 15 years from today. Why we focus on brick and mortar? E-commerce is outpacing brick and mortar by nearly five to one in growth rate. In 2014, in the US, store traffic declined 8.2% and transactions were down 10%. We believe that this is happening in part because millennials value pleasure over possessions. BCG reports tells us that 72% of these customers say they would rather spend money on experiences than physical products. An experience they are heavily engaged in is social media. Millennials spend an average of 5.4 hours a day on social media. This platform allows them to write their own story and create their own brand. They are more distracted than ever. Brands and retailers must find a way to get their attention. BCG reports that over the last decade, 60%, the majority of luxury growth came from retail expansion and 40% was organic. In the future, the reverse will be true with 65% of growth predicted to come from the customer and 35% from retail expansion. The next decade, it's all about the customer. Jeff Bezos, CEO of Amazon, reinforces this idea through the following quote. We see our customers as invited guests to a party. We are the hosts. It's our job every day to make every important aspect of the customer experience a little bit better. In the past, luxury products were a representation of self-worth, a personal stamp evaluated by others. But now, we need more than just product. We are craving experiences. The lines are blurring between product and experience. So what is the impact for retail? Presently, Retailers compete with one another for share of wallet. However, the future belongs to those that can win her share of time. The answer lies in giving her an experience she wants to spend time on. The traditional retail model has been defined by four pillars. Assortment, service, navigation, and product. We will walk you through what they mean today and how they will evolve in the future. But before we do that, let's review certain mega trends that are impacting the retail environment. She is looking for a simple experience, reminiscent of a mom and pop, like the local bookstore, a familiar place where everyone knows her name. This retail format fosters a sense of belonging, and allows customers to be treated as individuals. In fact, Wells Fargo reported 43% of small business owners have revenues higher than 12 months ago. As observed during our Asia field studies, one prevalent trend is slow shopping. Retailers are dedicating selling space to areas for customers to relax in, like cafes and libraries the retailers know that the more time she spends in store, the more likely she is to make a purchase. Transparency is an emerging value marked by increased customer interest in understanding where products come from and how they were made. The BCG FIT Global Customer Study finds that 60% of customers cite authenticity as a driver of interest in provenance. Customers want behind-the-scenes access and visibility into product inspiration and creation. She also does not want to own as many possessions as she may have previously. Our collaborative research with BCG tells us that millennials are more interested in renting versus owning than prior generations. In fact, 75% say they're willing to rent a wedding dress. Winning her share of time requires new thinking and a new approach. It's not about marketing, it's about creating. According to Bernard Arnault, chairman and CEO of LVMH, it's not about creating dresses to put in museums. 
what we do is create desire in our clients and attract them to our products. It's about creativity that is pragmatic. The old model pushed out product to large groups of customers. The new model creates desire pulling in customers one individual at a time. With the objective of capturing her share of time, we will break down the retail landscape as we know it. Now that you've seen the four pillars, let's begin with the first, assortment. 24 million pieces of content are shared every day, not to mention the thousands of new products launched every year. The customer is overwhelmed. She has access to too much information and has far too many choices. As authoritative tastemakers, luxury brands have the ability to guide the customer through their choices. They can set the trends and they can curate her life. Our recommendation for a lifestyle curation is an 80-20 model, one in which 80% of your store is filled with your product. The remaining 20% is non-competitive product that complements her lifestyle. Your brands can employ creativity and playfulness to drive commerce. As mentioned earlier, it's creativity that's pragmatic. There are three ways in which we recommend executing the remaining 20% of that 80-20 model. Store as a magazine, co-creating, and share of ownership. Store as a magazine is a concept in which assortment turns over several times a year. The product is merchandised to express a point of view. Rachel Sheckman, owner and founder of New York City's one-of-a-kind, innovative concept store called Story, shares the story to the consumer through inventory that's turned over every four to eight weeks. This is editorial merchandising. For example, the most recent concept at Story focused on women. It showcased influential women and the products they love. This was truly an experience for her, by her. Another execution of 80-20 is co-creating. It's a partnership between two brands creating something truly unique and ownable. An inspiring example of co-creating is Noma in Copenhagen. Described as edible theater, Noma is the number one restaurant in the world, where Chef Rene Redzepi forages raw ingredients and prepares culinary delights. Noma's co-retail partner was Club Monaco. Launched in February of 2015, Noma and Club Monaco created a pop-up space showcasing carefully curated products. The partnership resulted in a 360 experience for both customers. Considering people wait three months to get a table at Noma, imagine what it would be like if your customers would be willing to wait three months to step inside your store. The final example of 80-20 execution capitalizes on a growing movement towards shared ownership. This is characterized by a customer's interest in renting versus owning. Today, companies like Rent the Runway and Village Lux offer customers limited time access to fashion. Village Lux, a members-only website, is where you can lend your wardrobe or rent from another's. You have 100% control of who can borrow your beloved pieces and when. Imagine providing your customers experience of wearing a luxury product without the responsibility of owning it. By executing the new 80-20 model through store as a magazine, co-creating, or share of ownership, your assortment becomes a discovery. You've just seen how assortment has transformed into discovery. The second pillar is service. In-depth analysis finds that retained customers are 55% more valuable in terms of spend than new customers. Yet less than half of customers are retained by brands year over year. To build and retain long-term customer relationships, we need to invest in the main link between our brand and the customer, our sales associate. They are at the heart of the relationship and have the key to creating long-term customer loyalty. To invest in the sales associate, we recommend the following. 
create the role of experience manager at point of sale, provide long-term career options, and adjust your compensation model tailored to drive the goals of the brand. So what is an experience manager? The experience manager drives local consumer engagement, communicates with the customer and provides feedback to the brand, and is evaluated on customer retention and brand loyalty. The experience manager is intuitive. She is attuned and understands customer behavior. She is tech savvy, eager to learn and embrace technology. Collaborative, she is vested in the success of the team. And she is diverse. She can relate to the new and evolving future customer. According to Camille McDonald, president of brand development at Bath and Body Works, an effective salesperson should never be lost to a competitive brand. They're just too hard to find. To retain the experience manager, we need to offer career options that provide exposure to learnings that support the movement of talent cross-functionally. We also need to allow for greater work-life flexibility. This is the number one reason that people leave in the field. We need to offer this to our best and brightest. We also need to invest in an updated compensation model with competitive-based salaries, collaborative-based team incentives, and a bonus structure that changes from product-driven to customer relationship loyal. When the experience manager is charged with managing the brand experience and the brand invests in her, she will focus on the key brand goal to build relationships with customers. Service now becomes relationship driven. You've seen assortment become discovery, service become a relationship. The third pillar is navigation, or the way in which we guide the customer through all categories of the store. In the future, we will define navigation as the way we guide the customer through her entire purchase cycle, shifting from real time to right time. Intel explained the shift as predictive and preemptive, understanding not only where she is going to be, but also why she is going there. As the consumer moves throughout their journey from online search to peer-to-peer -to -peer conversation, we have the ability to collect data. However, data is not enough. It is about turning big data into smart data. Disney's new Magic Band technology leverages smart data as it helps facilitate the customer experience through the entire theme park, responding at the right time. The Magic Band supports productivity. One example is that it monitors the flow of visitors and can detect when crowds are forming. Disney will respond with the character parade to break up these crowds, entertain the visitors, and move them to less crowded areas, not only making the entire park more productive, but bringing a smile to everyone's faces. Ultimately, it is emotional drivers that will dictate customer behavior. Nike and Google went into customer living rooms to learn their passion points firsthand to optimize their World Cup experience, uncovering that customers wanted to feel closer to the action. Nike took their smart data and overlaid it with emotional motivations, creating 3D ads of athletes scoring immediately following a real-time goal to enhance the moment and overall feeling of celebration. Navigation becomes the balance of the when and the why the real time and the right time. In other words, it is the perfect balance of high touch and high tech. What does the future of brick and mortar look like? According to Intel, it is WACD, what Amazon can't do. More importantly, it is about providing a unique and relevant experience for the customer. Communicating with customers at the right time transforms navigation into a journey that the brand takes with the customer. Now that we have created an assortment curated for the customer's lifestyle and pushed service to become relationship driven, taking the customer and brand on a journey together, we can now address the most critical element, which is product because ultimately it is the product that drives the transaction and impacts the bottom line. We want to bring you back to our opening statement. The lines are blurring between product and experience. 
It is about creativity that is pragmatic. In general, the paradigm for luxury has been brand-centric, where the brand dictates to the customer what she wants. The future will be one in which the consumer dreams and the brand creates. Today, product is three-dimensional. In the future, product will be enhanced by the fourth dimension, which, as Bernard Arnault stated, is creativity. Creativity that is inspired by the brand but brought to life by the customer. Technology allows for a revolutionary degree of customization and personalization, forcing a dialogue between brand and customer. The brand provides the context, the ingredients, the craft, while the customer's desired colors, textures, and patterns are both predicted and anticipated. As the customer engages in product creation, product truly becomes an experience. Brands and retailers must take the traditional retail fundamentals and push the boundaries. The combination of these new pillars will capture the customer's share of time. The new pillars of the retail model will be applied across all channels, including freestanding stores, pop-up shops, and even e-commerce. However, the ideal context to bring these pillars to life is the global flagship the ultimate retail expression of a luxury brand. It must be a unique environment where the brand is showcased and celebrated. Our vision is that the global flagship incorporates the four pillars of the new retail model but goes much further. For us, the unexpected is turning the retail experience inside out. Today we go into a store and experience product. Tomorrow we'll go into a store and experience the full life cycle of product creation. Inside, we envision a future in which the customer has transparency into the craftsmanship and creative process of luxury goods. We predict that the future flagship resembles an open kitchen concept where the customer is invited behind the scenes. Just as in an open kitchen, the customer can witness the creation of the product, beginning with the raw ingredients that are prepared in a recipe and then brought to life. Fine craftsmanship has long been considered the hallmark of a luxury product. In fact, Hermes defines luxury as that which can be repaired. Hermes manufactures only 70,000 Birkin bags a year. The number is limited due in part that it takes two years to train the craftsmen that make the bags. LVMH's Journée Particulière is a program that allowed the public a rare glimpse into the detailed creativity and craftsmanship to some of their most exclusive brands, including Bulgari, Fendi, and Loewe. Offering tours of the workshops and ateliers and factories, the two-day event attracted more than 100,000 visitors. Imagine if customers could experience this in your global flagship. The new global flagship exemplifies transparent storytelling and a celebration of the craftsmanship and creative process of luxury. We predict the future global flagship becomes a place where the customer gets to create their story in the context of your brand. She gets to write another chapter in the story of her personal brand that she will want to share with others. The 2007 capstone recommended the flagship as a brand museum. In addition to housing a museum, which looks to history, the future flagship looks forward, telling a story that blends the heritage of the brand with the customer's narrative, elevating their personal brand. This collaborative storytelling will capture the customer's share of time. Ultimately, the future of the global flagship transforms and becomes the capital of creation. It is where the customer dreams and the brand creates, truly an experience worth her share of time. Now I invite you to take a look into the future of luxury retail. <laughs>